Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mark again. I'm at my workbench. What you can't see is just off camera. It is covered in crap because I've got Vespa carburetor parts. I've got Vespa tail light parts. It is a mess, but new projects always seem to pop up before the last project is done. Today is no exception. This is the Lapai 2020A Plus amplifier out of my wife's hair salon. It does not work. Let's figure out why. Okay, so a few words about this. These used to be for sale at Parts Express. I haven't checked lately. I don't think they're available anymore. I think they updated it. It was about 25 bucks, maybe 23 bucks at the time. Came with the power supply. It worked. I mean, the, the sound was pretty good. It was real efficient, so it didn't get super hot. I mean, it did what it was supposed to. Um, I got it kind of as a toy. It was actually in my uh, vintage TV project that I built, and it ran the speakers in the bottom of that. Hardly ever used it like that. My wife needed an amplifier for the salon, and it had to fit in a small cabinet. I was like, hey, this should be perfect. Anyway, it's worked for three years. It finally took a crap. So I got online to see, well, maybe we'll get another one. I mean, 20 bucks, it lasted that many years. I'm sure it's fine. There are people now selling these as if it were like some piece of uh, audio hi-fi unobtainium, like trying to get 30, 40, 50. I think I saw somebody even trying to get 70 something dollars for one of these, like NOS in the box. It's the discontinued one. These are not worth that much money, first off. The only reason I'm trying to fix it is because A, I'm cheap, and B, I thought it might make a good video to show you how to troubleshoot some electronics. These are perfectly good for, you know, 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks, if you get the adapter with it. Do not go spending more than that on one of these. If somebody tells you, like, it's wonderful, it, these are amazing, and oh, they, you know, now there's rip-off versions that say Lepi on them, <laughs> like, don't get those, those aren't as good as the original. It's all crap. Don't buy into the hype. There's people hot rodding these things, like taking them apart, replacing all the parts in them to make them better. You can get a better amp for whatever you're gonna spend on that. I mean, if you're gonna go up to like 50 bucks or something, you could get a way better amp. I would recommend like Sure Electronics, not Sure Microphones, but the they import amplifier boards are all over eBay, Parts Express has them. I've used them in my Bose Wave Radio Killer project. Those are 100 times better. All you gotta do is just stick them in a project box and you're done, so. That said, let's see what's wrong with this piece of junk. Okay, so here it is. I am just going to show you how I diagnose any simple electronic circuit like this, how I try to figure out what's wrong with it. So first, let me get it apart. Okay, so the first thing I like to look at with any bit of electronics like this, there's sort of like three steps I like to go down. The first is anything electromechanical, anything that physically moves. That's usually where you're gonna find the problem. The second place you'll find them a lot of times is anything that gets hot. Uh, in this case, it's pretty obvious that they expect the tripath chip, this is the actual amplifier. I mean, this is 90% of what this unit is, is this one chip. They're expecting that to get hot, hence the heat sink. So that's obviously a place to look. If that is bad, it's not worth replacing because it probably costs as much as the new complete unit. But other things that get hot, I mean, little ICs like this usually don't get too hot. I'm not even sure what those are. I did see somebody deciphered one of these and made a schematic for it, so I'll probably print that off and bring it out here. Diodes sometimes get hot and burn up, uh, so that's another place you can sometimes look, uh, especially if it has a built-in power supply. Um, there's always gonna be uh, four diodes at the beginning or possibly a bridge rectifier that contains all four diodes in one. Those usually get hot. That's usually a good place to start looking, but this has the external, the wall wart adapter. And the third thing are electrolytic capacitors. You know, even the best ones have a limited lifespan, but in these, the electrolytics are gonna be really cheap. Let me see if this even has a brand. Yeah, I don't see any brand name. So who knows? So those are usually the places I look. First thing I'm gonna do, this right here, this is a relay. I'm not sure what it is relaying, 
but it's safe to assume if this doesn't work, the amplifier is not gonna have any output. So I'm gonna check that with 12 volts and see if it clicks. All right, I just printed off the schematic I found that is supposedly for this, and it has no relay on it. So I don't know what it's for, but whatever it is, it should work, and I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. It looks like it goes through the speaker output, so it must be some sort of speaker protection or mute circuit or anti-pop. But if it doesn't turn on, you're not gonna have any sound. All right, I'm gonna put some sound into this and jump across the relay and see if I have any sound coming out. Okay, here's my highly technical setup. Got some mystery speaker with a torn cone, Duracell 12 volt battery, and an iPhone. I left the adapter at the hair salon, so this is the best I got. Well, if it wasn't screwed up before, it is now. I just hooked up reverse polarity. Okay, got the light coming on. And it is playing, so we should have sound. That relay did never click. There it is. It's a relay. Let's see if I have another one. Not likely. Okay, well I got that one removed. I found a box labeled relays. It's pretty sad. Yeah, not looking good. I don't have much for relays. All right, this is gonna be stupid, but my wife's going crazy not having music in the salon. So here's the old one. It's 12 volts, two poles, normally open. That's the same as both of these. They have the same ratings, it's just single pole, but they're 12 volts, so I'm gonna make it a dual pole. All right, it's not pretty. It is kind of funny to think about people that are taking these apart and modding them and upgrading parts and what I just did to this thing would really annoy them. Okay, I don't have sound. It did occur to me that I have no idea if those relays are any good. I probably pulled them out of something. Okay, well here's where we're at. I did a little bit of Googling and one annoying thing, there's schematics for this all over the internet, all kind of based on the same couple of images, and none of them include that relay circuit. And I checked, and right now the power going across the relay is a dead short. And it looks like it hooks two 12 volts on one side. So the other side presumably goes through some sort of switching circuit. And I noticed it runs over here, and there's a couple little transistors down here that also aren't on the drawing. So I suspect, some signal comes out of this chip to say, okay, we're ready to go. Hits one or both of these transistors, drops one of these pins to ground so that the relay triggers, except something in that circuit is messed up. So it's just a dead short. So one thing I did notice when I had the relay hooked up, I put just power across there and it wasn't triggering. Well, that's because it was a dead short and the wire got warm. So mortaring a new board, I could dig deeper and figure it out but if I'm gonna spend my time figuring out an electrical problem, I've got a really nice Pioneer receiver in the basement that needs some repairs. This is not worth it. So I'm just gonna short across these two pins, put it back together, and it'll work until the new one comes in the mail. What the relay does apparently is it just waits until it's sure the signal coming out is done popping or if it has any DC that it gets filtered out before it sends it to the speakers. That's a noble goal, but we're running off this. I think it's each channel is two 8 ohm speakers in parallel and it's never above half volume. So we got 16 ohm speakers at half volume. We're probably giving them like two watts. I mean, it's a hair salon, it's not a nightclub. So I am not too worried. Let's just get this thing back together and call it a day. There you go, there's our new relay. So 
So you can see that's the pop that that relay is supposed to eliminate. Whatever, it's slightly annoying. So anyway, there you go. You win some, you lose some, but at least we got music. These are junk. Don't pay more than 25, 30 bucks for them. That's the moral of the story. Thanks for watching.